Hi, welcome to this section of the Physics 3 Tutor. And in this section, we're going to begin to talk about the topic of the electric field. And specifically, you know, you have to crawl before you can walk. So before we start talking about really complicated electric fields and things that are, that are sort of uh, off to the right a little bit, we're going to begin to talk about the electric field of something we know about from the last section, and that's the simple point charge, right? So remember from the last section, uh, we talked about the fact that uh, these charges that we have around us, electrons, protons, or any object that has a charge to it, um, they, when you have two of these charges near one another, there's a force that develops, much like the gravitational force between the planet and yourself. That just spontaneously happens uh, there. So the same sort of thing happens for electric charges. And furthermore, we actually said that the Coulomb uh, force, the Coulomb's law, um, describes that force and that form of that equation that we talked about in the last section looked very very much like the gravitational force law. So there's some symmetry there in nature between the electric forces and the gravitational forces. That's really interesting. Lots of physicists are working on on understanding why that's the case even today to try to unify those forces and see why they're actually so similar. But anyway that's sort of an aside. So what we've done so far is we found out that these charges if you take a positive charge here and another positive charge here and you stick them in a jar, pull out the air, and stick these two charges and you let them go, if it's positive and positive they're going to begin to move apart. There's a force that we said is the Coulomb force that just pops up somehow out there and it pushes these charges apart and they move away from one another. Like charges repel. That's what we said, right? Now also if you take uh, two unlike charges, opposite charges, a positive charge, a negative charge, and you put them in a vacuum jar and you stick these two things in there and then you let them go, they're going to attract one another. We said that the Coulomb force in that case develops so that they actually pull each other together. Now we didn't give any proof of the Coulomb uh, force law. We didn't give any proof of any of that stuff. That's not something you can really prove. That's sort of like prove you know, why gravity exists this way. That's something you can't prove. You walk outside and you see an apple fall from the tree and you know that gravity exists. It's not anything to prove, it's something to observe. And that's how most physics is. At the basic level, you observe something, um, you know, like a refraction of light through a lens or something. You observe it and then you try to describe it. So the same thing with electric charges. We know that they attract each other because we can put them in a jar and see this. We know that they can repel each other under certain cases when they're the same charge. We observe it, so we see it. We write the Coulomb force law to describe that, that force and it predicts what force should be there. It all works fine and dandy. The question is, how do the charges quote unquote know that the other charge is actually there? In other words, if I put a charge here and I put a charge here and they are separated by a physical distance, they're not touching each other, and they begin to repel one another, how do they know that they're supposed to repel each other? In other words, how does one charge know that the other one exists in order for this force to develop? These are getting into questions beyond the scope of this, of this course because really when you drill down into it, we really don't know the real true fundamental answers to why nature behaves that way. You know, as another aside, um, people have been discussing gravity for the same, the same reasons for hundreds of years. Why does an apple know when you drop it? The earth is two meters down, right? Why does the apple know to begin to fall, right? Well, there's no knowing involved. We know that it must be some way the universe is actually constructed to make this happen, but we can't see any connection between them, so how can it possibly be? Well, Einstein came along and said that the space-time surrounding the earth, surrounding any object, um, the actual space-time itself, which is sort of the fabric of the universe in the dimensions of space and time, begins to curve when gravitational uh, object, a, a massive object, is around it. And so the apple is simply following that curve. Now we don't see a curve here. We don't actually see a curvature in space-time. It's not something we can observe. It's in a higher dimensional you know, space than what we actually see, but it's there. And that apple follows that curvature, so to speak, along down to the ground. It's the natural course of things because that's the way the fabric of the universe is. So we don't talk about curvature of space-time when we're talking about these electric charges, but there's something similar that over the centuries very, very important scientists and, and observers have developed that sort of tries to explain how these electric charges will know, quote-unquote, to repel each other or attract each other, and it turns out that it's incredibly useful and incredibly important. So we're going to begin our 
discussion of the electric field. That is how the genesis of the electric field uh, comes about. Basically, before I write any math on the board, this is what an electric field is. Just like the Earth or any massive object curve space-time and then we say that objects that exist in that in that space begin to follow a path and uh, so, so that they begin to have an attractive force because they're simply following a path um, down to the object, right? Much in the same way as an analogy for electric charges what we say is that every single charge, every one of them, spontaneously produces what we call an electric field. So surrounding that charged particle is an invisible force field. Well, let's not call it a force field yet. We, we'll call it an invisible vector field. We call it an electric field. So we'll start drawing pictures with arrows and all that stuff and you'll see the direction that the field is pointing and so on. So but if I have a proton right here, this proton quote unquote emanates from it an electric field. You can't see it, you can't touch it, you can't taste it, but we say that it's there. Right? That electric field will exist as long as that proton exists in this space. Move the proton over here, electric field follows it everywhere it goes. It emanates from that charge. Okay? Now, put that on the back burner and just pretend that you believe that for a second. Now, we take another charge, let's say it's an electron or another proton. We stick it in the vicinity of that first charge that has that electric field surrounding him. Right? Then we say that all charged particles begin to move along those electric field lines. And that's basically what it, what it amounts to. So if you take a, a proton, you stick it in the vicinity of this other proton, that proton is going to begin to follow those field lines spontaneously. And the way that it does that is a force develops. So, and that force is the Coulomb force that we've already learned. So everything is self-consistent. We're not tossing out the Coulomb force that we've learned. That's something very important, and that's why we learned it. But an alternative way of looking at the situation is like, look, all of these charged particles create an electric field. It emanates from it and it's always there even though you can't see it. Then you take another charged particle, you stick it in that field, spontaneously that particle will begin to move along those electric field lines. Okay? If you take a neutral object like an atom or you know a Tupperware bowl or a brick or something neutral and you stick it in the vicinity of that electric field, absolutely nothing will happen because that's a neutral object. Only charged objects move in these electric field uh, situations, right? So the brick is made of billions and billions of atoms and all those atoms have protons and electrons, that's true, but as a whole unit that brick is a neutral object so it doesn't actually have any Coulomb force attached to it. So that's in a nutshell what we're going to learn about. The rest of what we're going to talk about is going to be mathematically showing you how that, that, is, that is possible and how, uh, how uh, what I'm telling you in words comes to be. So let's do that right now. First we're going to start with what you already know which is Coulomb's law, right? Which, remember, we didn't prove. It's something that was observed. And someone said, look, this equation fits the force that happens here. And we said that Coulomb's law was equal to 1 over 4 pi times the permittivity of free space, Q1, which is just a constant, by the way. It's just a constant in nature. Q1, Q2, these are the charges involved that we're saying has a force between them divided by the distance between them squared. It looks exactly like the gravitational force law except these are not masses, these are charges. The other main difference between gravitational force and electric force is that, I mean you've figured this out already, gravitational force is always attractive. Always. That we have seen anyway, it's always attractive. Whereas electric forces can be repulsive. Uh, when you have the certain types of charges in, in, in the presence of one another, the, the same charges will repel and they'll be repulsive. That's a major, major asymmetry between the two things. The force laws look the same, but that's pretty interesting. So, you know, another aside, scientists are really interested in trying to figure out why these things are so similar and if there's maybe additional similarities that we don't even know about, maybe there is such a thing as a repulsive gravitational force. We've just never seen it before. Maybe it doesn't exist in our region of the universe, but perhaps a repulsive gravitational force is entirely possible. We just have never observed it. Maybe it's just not around us right now, but if the duality between the electric force and the gravitational force is really and truly complete, then it would seem to be a, a, a serious thing that you would look for anyway. I'm not saying I believe that anti-gravity exists or not, but it's something that people are looking into, just from a symmetry point of view. All right, so we have said this is the Coulomb force law. Every charge pushes on all the other charges with this force. Now, whether it's an attractive or repulsive force depends on the sign of the charges that you have, right? 